r slash ask reddit what has slowly turned to sh network tv it's the same rehashed garbage year after year it's no wonder that netflix and amazon prime were able to gain traction so easily nbc presents cop show with a lame twist oh man i really wanted to watch cop show with a lame twist but it comes on at the same time as doctor abrasive personality but he really cares Imga, their developer are breaking the mobile site piece by piece to push the app and now it is impossible to use. In addition to that the overall quality of posts and comments has gone downhill. The average benefits of having a bachelor's degree. It's pretty much an open secret in the pure sciences that a bachelor's has been pretty much replaced with master's programs. And there are a lot more course heavy master's programs that just act as extensions to bachelor's that mean the same thing as a bachelor's 30 years ago. Edit. Yo. Reddit gets enough ad gold money. Didn't even think this was a guild worthy comment. If you care about this issue, donate to a scholarship fund or something. Or a non-profit that works with the National Park Service. They really need the money ATM. Edit. Some of the comments here seem like I need to clarify. The only reason this is a problem is because it increases the gap between people who can afford staying out of the workforce for longer and people who can't. Requiring more education for certain jobs is absolutely a good thing. But that education needs to be made available based on effort and proficiency, as opposed to the financial barriers and wanting to get into the workforce sooner being the main reasons people stop their education. Yep, my degree, physiology, so maybe not a pure science like physics chem, is literally worthless without a gradual degree behind it. It works for me because I want the grad degree. But I know a number of my classmates are finding out that a degree in physiology doesn't qualify them for any more than any other bachelors would. Snapchat. I used to be pretty interested in seeing what people are up to after a huge format change. There's just less appeal to even watch their stories at all. Such a huge how the duck did you fail moment. They didn't do the things they should and did do the things they shouldn't. Consistently. That's what's happening with Facebook. Too radio we've been relegated to manningly pop r&b and country stations yet they all play the same 15 20 songs over and over ps and they're all owned by the same three companies there's still a couple rock channels around my area but one has been classic rock from the 70s 80s since the late 90s the other seems to think artists stopped making rock music after 2005 Classic rock from the 70s 80s yes, what? You don't want to hear another one bites the dust twice an hour? My dreams of owning a house edit. Holy shit this blew up heaps ha 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 I live in Australia guys edit too. I work 16 hours a week which leads to about $1. 200 a month and I $700 away each month. I study full time at uni which is why I can't work more and I'm 20. Just feels like it's going to take a long time hey ha 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 ha. I don't want to move far because I have lots of family. Californian here. Feels like I'll be renting forever. It's either rent, buy a condo for 500k or win the lottery and put an actual house for $700,000 plus. Not great options. Invasive money making trends in video games. Games being made to be inconvenient in order to make the customer want to buy microtransactions for features many gamers have been used to having as a standard for many years. I get it's a business but it's hard watching a lifelong hobby become ruined by either ads or intense grinding unless you spend even more money. Now we have a generation of gamers who see it as normal and it's only going to become more and more of a thing. Won't be long until I sound like an old man. I remember when if I wanted to unlock all characters, I pressed a series of buttons at the main menu. These days you gotta give someone your credit card for them. People love to compare microtransactions to pumping quarters into an arcade machine. Thing is though we had a glorious few years when you'd buy a console game and it was complete and you could play it without an internet connection and finish a story and your three closest friends could play some sort of PvP in your living room with just the console. Four controllers in the game. Almost no games are like that these days. Well that and also you didn't have to put two quarters in when one game costs 35 cents. Microtransactions are set up so that the amount of in-game currency you buy doesn't line up with the cost of in-game benefits. It's shit like spend $10 on 2100 coins but you can only spend coins in bundles of 400, 900 or 1500. 
This does two things, obfuscates how much what you are ultimately buying is actually worth. $10 for 2100 coins. I just spent 1500 so that's like I put about $7 in a glorified slot machine. Odds are good you won't be doing cross multiplication when you're just trying to play a ducking game though. Creates a pressure to spend more so you don't have an unusable balance left over in your account. You spent your 1500 coins, leaving you with 700. You can't spend 700 even. So you need to either buy more to get closer to cashing out or just be okay with losing the leftover coins. But the gaming industry figured out how to turn itself into unregulated gambling where the only thing you can win is an incentive to keep playing the game. All brick and mortar retail. 10 cash registers but only one cashier. Practically everywhere. Love spending 15 minutes in line to buy a stick of deodorant at Walgreens. Edit, since this got a lot of upvotes. I encourage people to read this article about how UNIQLO is thriving specifically because they don't cut back on staff. HTTPS colon slash slash www.newyorker.com magazine the 26th of March 2012 the more the merrier. Retail slave here. They think they're saving cash by severely understaffing stores. Skeleton crew on a Saturday? More money in corporate pockets. We hate it too. Which is one of the reasons why more customers turn to online shopping. I don't want to wait in long lines or check out my own items. Duck it. I'll just order it from Amazon. Facebook. Those who started it now hate it. And those who ruined it love it. The same generation who told us not to use our real name online in that discussing religion, politics and sex, uality, in public is uncouth is the same generation doing all those things on FB. Infrastructure in the US, bridges, roads, aging rails, etc. This is so true. Being a civil engineer I am also very excited about the opportunities that the shitty infrastructure will provide for me over the duration of my career. Hopefully we'll vote to actually fund such projects in the future. Teaching. It was never an easy job. But in my state, California, part of the ed code is that students can't be suspended for defiance, disturbing class, or disrespect. So basically over the past three years, the students have figured out that they can do pretty much anything they want and not suffer any real consequences. As a result, for the first time in my 15 year career I am failing more than half of my students because there is no basic classroom control. What kind of discipline options are still available to you as a teacher? Calls home. Trips to the dean's office which will either end in them staying there for the rest of the period or coming back with nothing to show for it. Which cuts the legs out from under any teacher. But outside of that, not much. YouTube it started out as a small niche community of people posting interesting content. Now you get to watch Boobxxpalsks play Fortnite and sit through 10. 0 0 0 1 0 3 0 Second ads. Don't get me wrong. The good stuff is on there. It's a bottom layer of 7 layer shit bean dip. Edit. I know about it block. The point is that YouTube sold out, and goes to pretty great lengths to inconvenience its content creators and viewers for those sweet sweet dollars. Top 5 Fortnite Youtubers who've sworn. Ublock Origin has been a godsend. Haven't seen a single ad on YouTube in years. Best part is that Firefox on mobile supports it, so I can't hit YouTube on my phone and not have to endure ads in that shitty app version. The Internet. Back when I was younger I frequently visited dozens of different websites. There were countless forums and websites worth spending your time on. And clickbait wasn't a thing as much as it is nowadays. A decade ago my browsing habits were much more varied. Cracked. Gaia. YouTube. I can has cheeseburger. TGWTG. Instructables. At least 4 different forums. Game animation portals. Etc. I only hit F5 whenever I was waiting for someone's forum reply or for something to be uploaded. Nowadays stuff is so centralized, and so much stuff from back in the day has disappeared or gone bad, that my internet browsing habits are a loop of reddit youtube reddit comma reddit facebook youtube reddit, and now we gotta deal with manipulative practices from our content providers with their own agendas, because many places online will try to steer us towards a specific viewpoint or conclusion if not outright use us for their own profit. I still remember the outrage when ICHC's new owner said that users didn't matter, 
their data did. These days that's common enough to be found everywhere. Back then I felt like I had a home on the internet, as well as an identity. Not anymore. Comma. Christ, this struck a chord. And I only really kicked into the net in 2006 when I could move out. I've never thought about it, but reading this, I realized my internet habits were very similar in the early zeros. Now, exactly like you said, my browsing is just 3 or 4 sites and a lot of pressing F5. I just realized that I, too, feel like I no longer have an internet home. It's a sad realization. MTV, turn to well beyond shit. What does the M stand for again? Met? Maybe it's TV. Mediocre TV. Met TV. Geocaching. I was one of the first in my county doing it. Back when it was new enough that it got me a full page article on the front of the local newspaper's sports section. Something that I'd have thought extremely unlikely to ever happen. Early on it was great. There was no money involved. And people did new innovative things. I had one of the first underwater caches in the world. Then they got greedy and started premium memberships and requiring money for travel bugs. Which were one of the fun spontaneous things the community had come up with. The user community and the admins got more and more toxic and competitive. At least in this area. And it got less fun. My scuba cache was archived because a couple of people couldn't find it. And I couldn't get out there to check on it within a couple of weeks. Chartering a dive boat is not cheap, so I left, and I don't want anything to do with the hardcore catchers that are still around. They'll race all over trying to be first to find and shit on anyone who's not as hardcore as them. I'm with you on this one. I got into gear catching around 2001 and did it for a few years. After a long hiatus I looked at it again and... What the duck is this? It costs money now? Duck you. Yep. And they get to declare your caches to be premium caches and charge other people to see the listings. At least, last time I checked, I've never seen a money grab ruin a fun thing faster. Duck everyone involved with the business side of that organization. The Walking Dead. Yes after season 3 it just became repeating scenarios. The Beth storyline did it for me. It was like the third storyline where one member of the group gets caught by another group. It was so repetitive and I after that I realized the show was not going anywhere. They needed to move on from the petty interpersonal politics and get back to the zombies. They needed to move on from the petty interpersonal politics and get back to the zombies. So, I'm not going to defend TWD and say it's great or anything. The plots are getting stale and recycled. Bait and switch scenarios for possible deaths. And lame cliffhanger are all tactics that are getting old. That said. There have been easily a few dozen movies focused on the zombies and the action of killing the zombies. To the point that it itself is a stale trope. I found the focus on the living people in a world like that to be a fresh view to present. I suspect if a real situation like that, the surviving people would be much more of a source of conflict and drama. They'll run out of neat ways to kill the mindless zombies eventually. I would say music festivals local events. People start to see dollar signs an opportunity and it causes them to lose their charm that made them popular. Nowadays I feel as if everything is overpriced and underperforming. Warp Tour, which is a really small traveling pseudo festival, is ending because they don't make enough money anymore. The big bands all go to the huge overpriced ones. And less people will pay for a ticket to see a bunch of small unknown bands play for a day. Cracked. Com their articles have been going downhill in the last two years ever since they went to freelancers. Last two years. I ran way back in like 2014 to 2015 and that shit is failing even then. I remember it got so bad. It was like a battle between the authors and the comment section. So bad. Men irregulars went and started another site called the comment section. Cracked has been garbage. Mostly because they, like so many other publishers, Tried to shift a video, only to realize it's expensive to produce quality stuff, and monetization is next to impossible. That said, there are some pretty good cracked videos. Food? Laughs in Central European edit. Oh shit. You triple the amount of my comments karma. Voice. Edit 2. Also, some people missed my point. Our food is better because we make it ourselves. As processed is crappy, but yes. Processed food in Central Europe is in fact worse than in the West. Edit 3. Yes, I missed the joke. 
got my head in the clouds as usual and thought this refers to the quality of food instead. Germans don't laugh. The History Channel. Next on Porn Stars Rick finds the recording to a secret Nazi interrogation that might just prove that aliens went to the moon and the pickers unveil the sparse of our iron sucks here IP from a storage unit. You just earned your own show on the History Channel. The Middle Class. Nowadays, it's just poor people racking up debt so they can pretend they're not poor. The cost of living is skyrocketing. And wages haven't come close to keeping up. In 50 years, we went from being able to support a family in a middle class lifestyle on a single wage to struggling on dual income. Agreed. People nowadays live above their pay grade. Being what is called house poor, I see so many people buy nice big houses. Housing is pretty expensive in my area. New cars. And have no money left over each month for anything else. I bought a small house last year, and everyone I dealt with was shocked that I was putting more than 20% down. Realtors would give me a lecture about PMI and how I only need to put 3% down payment and I was like nah, I'll put more than 20% down. Then it's like well, if you have dollar sign xx, xxx available as a down payment, you can put 10% down on this McMansion with a pool and a man cave and a 3 car garage. No, I don't want to stretch my budget to the limit just to have some extravagant house. I'm perfectly happy with a 1100 square featuring house from the 1950s and paying less per month. I'd rather take an international vacation every year than have granite countertops. Same goes with cars. I have a 2013 Subaru 4 cylinder that's paid off. And they keep sending me letters about how I can trade it in for the latest and greatest souped up model for only $199 a month or whatever. No. Sorry. Not interested. American Manufacturing. I've worked in a couple manufacturing plants. And have friends that work in others. We all have the same stories. Poor quality. Poor processes. Lack of innovation. Old equipment. Even older workforce since not many young people go for those jobs. You've got corporate entities that buy up these places. Squeeze them for every last profit they can. Outsource it overseas. And then close the doors and move on. There's no investing back into the company in the form of new machines. Or a trained workforce that is taken care of. My experience with is that it has a lot to do with where the factories are located. When I was doing QA engineering in Seattle we had no trouble finding competent employees who could follow the process and were up to date on new machinery tools. When I did the same thing in rural areas it was nearly impossible to find someone who wasn't on meth. Or who would stick around for more than 6 weeks. Or 6 days for that matter. They refused to. Or couldn't. Properly follow a process that required zero knowledge of the machine. And we had such a small pool of potential employees that this was the best we could do. I have a machine shop manufacturing facility. The aging workforce is terrifying. And I am seriously concerned about where we are going to be in 15 years. We have new equipment and certainly do our best to have good quality and processes. It's the hardest part from my chair is the corporations pull all the strings and make it almost impossible to make any money. The Honeywell. Gee. Boeing. Act. If you quote a job at a reasonable shop rate of $100 HR you'll never win a contract. So you quote it at $80 HR. Okay. Well the guy running the machine makes $25 HR. Or more. The machine was $400.000. Times that by the dozens of machines we have. That we have to make payments on. Plus pay interest. You have benefits and insurance to cover for the employee as well as the business. Carbide and materials are expensive not to mention the $20.000 slash month electricity bill. And I'm expected to float all of that on net 120-150 payment terms. If I ship an order today that I have 4 months of labor and material into. That has been paid for already. I don't get paid for it until October. The corporations are killing the industry one day at a time just so they can show their investors how much cash they have and how much profit they are making. Meanwhile shops like mine are closing every day because the overhead and carrying costs are just too much to ask a guide to take on anymore. Unless you have your own product line or have a really good niche, your days are numbered. American politics. People used to vote based on principles and issues. Now it's just a giant flame war slash celebrity gossip TMZ reality show mashup. 
the president used to be respected by most now it's a 50 stroke 50 love hate completely divided by party lines. Representatives no longer represent the individuals rather corporations and special interest groups. Also American medical system. I work in medicine and most people have no clue how little your doctors control your treatment now. So much is at the mercy of a computer algorithm from the insurance company. In all honesty, we tend to look back with rose-colored glasses. The truth is, it's always been particularly nasty and pedantic to some extent. Remember, Jefferson claimed Adams was transgender which, at the time, was a pretty negative thing. It hasn't really changed over the centuries. It's still just a big flame war. Jefferson claimed Adams was transgender he didn't. The actual line was, John Adams has a hideous hermaphroditical character, which has neither the force and firmness of a man, nor the gentleness and sensibility of a woman. That's not really the same as calling him transgender, but instead that his character traits would be unsatisfactory to everyone. Jefferson didn't say it at all. The quote comes from an extremely partisan newspaper editor named James Callender. Jobs used to work for amazing companies with great pay and amazing benefits, bonuses, incentives, just a positive environment. They had career development programs in place to motivate staff and move them up within the organization. Companies would dish out a budget for office parties, holiday parties and promote an inclusive work culture. I would get paid for social responsibility or to volunteer to charities on behalf of the company. Take time off work to attend industry events and network. Paid sick days, personal days, paid vacation and wellness subsidies and programs to promote a healthy work-life balance. Now every company I work for, big and small, seem to put profit before people and has greatly reduced the interest in providing a positive work environment and culture. This has resulted in low morale and motivation. They overwork and underpay their staff and will terminate a position to save a buck potentially ruining careers. I'm not sure when this shift happened but I noticed it within the last 5-10 years. And then they have the audacity to complain that employee loyalty is declining. Or, if they are particularly irritating, that millennials are killing employee loyalty. I worked for a multi-billion dollar international pharma company swimming in money last year and they treated me like absolute trash. Of the many things that happened, one always stands out to me. My wife had a miscarriage. My bosses, my team of 5 people had 4 different ones. All seemed to feel pretty strongly that my wife did not need me to be with her at the hospital. But one of them, when I asked for time off because my wife is getting a procedure done and they have to sedate her so she won't be able to drive responded with an actual outburst accusing me of lying. She can't be getting sedated. She yelled. Your wife is pregnant. She seemed pretty pleased to catch me in my alleged huge lie in front of everyone. Embarrassed and in front of the whole department. I had to say. Dot. Well. Not anymore. She's not. They didn't even apologize. This is just how they treat people there. At a place that can afford to do better. No less. Family Guy. It's 100% political now and seems to be directed towards a demographic who doesn't have interest in the show. I watched the 3 minute where Peter turns into a millennial and I wanted to give myself a lobotomy. I kinda feel like it was always obnoxious. There were some laughs in there. But it's only real redeeming moment was when Quagmire tore into Brian for his snotty elitism and hypocrisy. I was surprised to see McFarlane take such a direct shot at himself. Cartoon Network. It spams Teen Titans Go constantly when it isn't airing reruns on Adult Swim. Don't forget that Uncle Grandpa was a thing. Never forgive their sins. Reddit. I'd like to specifically call out r slash pics. Becoming a default sub is always a kiss of death. Quality drops substantially, however. When found Reddit, later than a lot of folks, about 6 years ago, there was still some quality content in the sub. Now, it's just straight up Facebook. These are the three posts you see on r slash pics. I lost 100 pounds. Give me up votes. Semicolon go to r slash progress pics. My grandpa beat cancer. Please upvote this picture of him bedridden in the hospital. Semicolon go somewhere else. You're an a-hole. I have a girlfriend. Please upvote this picture of a random girl smiling. I'm happy now. 
Semicolon go to r slash happy. My daughter is a girl and she likes something that's stereotypically for boys. Isn't she so unique? Girls don't like Star Wars. But she is a badass. Semicolon go to Facebook. R slash pics used to have a majority of cool ass pictures filling the front page. Now I'm gonna start blocking it because of all the B. S. Fishing for upvotes and compliments in every post. Based on this thread, everything. This happened long, long ago, but the educational channels such as a and &E, TLC, The History Channel, etc. They used to have some really great, quality programming that was interesting and educational. Now it's all shows about families with billions of children, trashy teen moms, pageant families, storage lockers, pawn shops, crime shows, etc. Call of Duty. My life ebay it's rare to find good deals on there now anything that's priced below average has outrageous shipping it's basically just amazon without two-day prime shipping it's amazon for obscure products whoa you made it to the end you're a ducking beast i'll cut you a deal smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh it's free and that's a great price